All right, guys. So today we have Ad Coder Contest, Ad Coder Beginner Contest 200. And I'm not running late, not at all. It, uh, definitely has not started yet. <laughs> okay, just kidding. Uh, let me adjust some of those things. And yeah, okay. So problem A, in what century is year M? Uh, that is actually interesting what is a century, but if it's from one to 3,000, I believe there's nothing strange uh, that can happen. And yeah, actually what is a century is interesting. So year 100 is in the first century. So I therefore assume that we want to subtract one so that our year step start from zero, which is much more convenient than starting from one. And once they start from zero, we want to divide by 100 uh, because all years from zero to 99, when divided by 100 and rounded down, will give zero. And at the end, we want to add uh, one because centuries start, the numeration of centuries also starts from one. Therefore, I assume we want something like this. And we're all tested just in case. Or if it was like a rated contest, I would submit straight away. But uh, yeah, here, like, as you may remember, I recently got to first done one, right? I'm not sure if they call it first done or they just call it done one. Uh, so the point is that uh, ad cutter beginner contests are no longer rated for me. So I can take my time and explain solutions. Here, it's just a usual trick that like you want to convert uh, everything to zero base and do some operations with it and convert to one base at the end if you have to. So problem B, 200 ABC makes sense. Uh, we are given an integer N want to do the following operation k times on n and print the result in integer. So if n is multiple of 200 divided by 200, otherwise uh, append 200 to the end of that string. Wow, okay, interesting. Uh, but that's... I legit don't see anything better than as a naive simulation. To be honest. And I don't want to do it in C++, sorry. Uh, but that's not happening. Well, maybe I'm missing something like uh, really stupid. But I don't see a way that is better than just perform this operation because number of times is very small. We can just do it and nothing bad will happen. Like, but the length of the intermediate values can be a bit longer then I would like it to be. I believe it will still fit into something like uh, int 128t, but that's GCC specific and probably you don't want to, like it's not, I don't see how it's better than just using Python, so. Oh, actually they are written like this, so okay. 
We are going to just do this. We read the lines, split it by the space, convert everything that every part that we get into integers. And because input is very small, we can just do it natively with input. We don't need like uh, to use system module for fast input output. As you may know, we in C++ we use fast input uh, in case the input or output files are large. So we turn off the synchronization with uh, the C way of doing input. We untie the input and output streams. Uh, in Python, we can do similar things pretty much with system model sys.std in sys.std out, but we don't have to because input is very small in this problem. So it will be very fast. Um, we want to perform this operation several times if n is divisible by 200 uh, we want to divide it by 200 and in python you do this for integer division for floor division and, uh, uh, well there are two things that we can do here First is that we do exactly what they said. And the other one is that we can write the result of that operation as such. There is no major difference uh, whatsoever because the constraints are low, but maybe this uh, is faster because integer to string conversion is not particularly fast. Anyways, um, well, I believe that we can do just this, this Python. Uh, looks legit, how uh, about second input file? Pretty much the same. And also looks very similar to what it should be. Uh, Python 3.8, yes, I believe we are not using any modern Python facilities. So we'll just go ahead and submit. See, easy. Um, so whenever you don't feel like doing long arithmetic in C++ or making some stupid observations, you can just use Python. Uh, but that won't be, become our habit because I believe that for competitive programming it's better when I code everything in C++ because the audience is broader and also because that's just <clears throat> better for you to see how things are done in C++ so that you can use them uh, on any pretty much level like your uh, really high sum levels. Okay, problem C, Ringo's favorite numbers too. So there was the first problem uh, version of that problem which we did not solve. So uh, we have a little disadvantage of not knowing the original legend. Uh, so ring allows the integer 200. We want to help him solve the problem. Uh, given a sequence A of n positive integers, we want to find the pair of integers ij, uh, which are indices apparently, and the difference is a multiple of 200. Hello, excuse me. I oh, want to, to count pairs. I never seen, I have never seen the word count in that statement, apart from the explanation. Oh, actually it also doesn't say the count to count. They say find the pair. What we really want to do is want to count. Well, again, okay, and that's a, a classical problem. We want to, 
<clears throat> create a, well, first of all, we want to read the input. Although that's not necessary. You see what we really want to do is we want to have frequency table and uh, how many pairs can that be? There be a lot of pairs, okay. Like if everything is like zero, if every number is zero or I don't know one, then every difference is zero. So it's a multiple of 200. That's one thing that you should always check. If, how large can the answer be? Because in this particular problem, it can clearly overflow. So you have to use uh, long integers for answer. Now we want to create frequency table because uh, we are only, as we only concerned with uh, differences, it seems very reasonable that we want to make use of congruence classes modulo 200, which are of course equivalence classes and stuff like that, but you don't need that. Uh, I don't know, discrete mass, uh, mass. Yeah, you only want a frequency table, right? And we use a vector just because it's a bit faster, but you could also create an order of map from integers to integers. What we are going to do now is, now we can read and not that we actually don't, uh, don't need any storage variables so we can read on the fly do something and we'll get our answer so here we want well uh, first thing that we always want is to convert ai to its uh, congruence class so we take the model operation and now uh, i believe i do just this because that says like count may have many uh, indices uh, j, there are, such that uh, the previous element is equivalent to AI modulo 200. So that counts in how many pairs AI is the second element. And then we just add it to make use of it later. Simple as that. Uh, Or actually, now that this is unrated, I can experiment with some app coder tools. That will, like, I don't know, automatically copy sample input for me. So four zero nine looks legit. Mm. I just want to do something real quick. I want to check that we actually implemented everything correctly and we don't overflow. This is actually useful. Uh, so like in real life, I don't know. Whenever you write some code, you actually want to test it uh, and not just write it and uh, make it run somewhere. Potentially somewhere where the failure is quite expensive. So that's uh, you clearly don't want to do this. Uh, I don't know, let's, let's say something stupid happens here. Okay, so now we have a huge file, I suppose, yes, 300 kilobytes that, uh, oh, that was not what we wanted. So we wanted this actually. Yeah, that's more like it. Um, now we can run our our program and return something like this, which makes sense. I believe it's around 
five billion. So yeah, I definitely could have overflow. I actually am is up to two hundred thousand, so we can we can test this as well. Yeah, that's very likely. It's around I don't know how many uh, twenty billion. So I definitely can overflow. Just. The friendly reminder, whenever you write, uh, whenever you solve some problem, just uh, make sure to consider what is the range of possible answers. Because otherwise you may get very disappointed with extra submissions and necessary ones. Uh, happy birthday too, again, apparently, appar oh, okay. I, I think I know what's going on. If we go to ABC 100, yes, yes, this is happy birthday, this is happy birthday too. Uh, we have Ringo's favorite numbers, yes. Yeah, so like, if you participated in 100 ABC, then you probably recognize uh, at least problem titles. And now the problem in problems should get a bit more difficult. So we are given uh, a sequence n, a sequence of n positive integers. Okay, and to determine whether there is a pair of sequences of lengths x and y, uh, <clears throat> such that they are no longer than a, both increasing strictly. Oh, I suppose that means that b and c are indices. Yes, yes, B and C are indices. Uh, they are different, so there is at least a one position at which they differ or they have different lengths. And uh, okay, so we want two subsequences which are equal to each other model of 200. And is it most 200? Okay, so like the first thing I can tell you is that uh, if n is at least, uh, what, eight, then there's always such subsequences. <laughs> uh, do we want to print them or one such pair? Okay, unfortunately. Oh, but that means just we can cut whatever. Yeah, so you see there is a, uh, it's a pigeonhole principle exercise. Uh, so you can like consider all possible subsequences, right? They cannot have all different values, uh, module 200, if there are too many of them. Namely, if there are at least 201 of them and two will coincide, and we can pick them. That's a good game for us. Uh, so what it means is, um, the number of subsequences that you can have, excuse me for a moment, uh, is of course two to the power two to the power of number of elements. That's it uh, to the to the power of n, and then minus one because you don't count empty subsequence technically, right? So as soon as uh, two to the power of n minus one is greater than two hundred or n one or equal to it, uh, then we are. Uh, 100% certain that the answer is yes, and we just have to find them. But it also tells us that uh, this inequality, let me just write it in case, uh, so we want this, right? Uh, this is basically equivalent to this, if n is a positive integer. So we don't need anything apart from first eight elements to find such B and C. If n is smaller than seven, than eight, then we don't know. We have to check explicitly. And the way uh, that we are going to check if there are some subsequences, we are going to create a like a frequency table, but this time, we will not uh, store the 
we will not store uh, frequencies, but rather we will store uh, subsequences. And to store a subsequence of which is relatively short, we just need to say whether we include each element or not. Because we only have eight elements, we can model that process with a bit set of size eight, uh, which is actually one byte, but whatever will uh, will decode and encode them as ints. Oh, that's a bit longer, but we don't care. Uh, so actually, this problem can be improved to like a lot. Uh, yeah, actually. It doesn't really change anything, so I guess it's also fine. Uh, we can like cut everything past its element. We won't even read your input. Uh, so we will create a frequency map of size 200 and then actually originally this should be something in like invalid value. F at zero should be zero. And then we look over all masks. We can count the sum of these elements. And we can put uh, the corresponding mask at the correct index in our array. And again, because we only interested model 200, we only need, we can have like uh, residuous classes, uh, which I believe we should say like, we can do it here. Because these numbers actually have large can, okay, no. I don't know the long, but technically it doesn't matter. Like this is just for this part, not to overflow. Okay. Uh, now there is a slight uh, difference. But we actually want to print something if this is not equal to one, because this we want to do if it's equal to negative one. So like we have not seen uh, such value of some model 200 before. So this is this case, and here we want to print. Uh, what do we want to print? We want to print uh, this value and then mask, right? So yes, number of bits, numbers of bytes. Okay. In at in at uh, at at color. <laughs> I don't really know how to say it. Uh, so here you have to be careful because yes and no in this contest are case sensitive. But I assume you already know that uh, because you failed to notice this uh, once upon a time. Fortunately, we all do. No, actually, I never control such issue, but maybe you have. Uh, let me define a function print mask because I can't afford it.
Here we have to exit the project. We will need to return statements. I don't really like it, but I don't really want to make it the good way. Otherwise, we want to output no, right? No. And ask. Uh, Wait, then just a specific phrase. We want one best indices, so we have to do this. Fortunately, oh, I did not copy the input. What was I thinking about? Oh, it's not case sensitive final more or what is? Apparently I missed something because when I started at color, it was case sensitive. And someone of my friends got got tricked by it. So now after that I remember. The fifth of November. Uh that's not good. Oh I assume You want neither this nor this, okay. Yeah, because we don't want to count empty subsequence. I just said it like several times before and then I act like a complete idiot, forget all about it. So yeah, here are the answers matches, matches and here, yeah, so I actually got uh, like, Exactly the answer they expected. Uh, I believe this just one gets executed. That's like preprocessor directive so that we can use built in pop count on MSVC, which we are running here locally. But it should like work on GCC as well. Okay, got accepted. So Problem E, Takahashi, uh, a pastry chef. What is pastry chef? When I top it, it's not like, ah, okay. So a pastry chef. Is uh, skilled in making pastries. Oh, okay. Desserts, breads, and other baked goods. Okay. Cool. So he, uh, Takahashi, is a pastor chef at ABC Confiscere. I assume it's like uh, some one more French word. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's French. Sweet shop, okay. So he has decided to make, I, I I can assure you that this part of the legend is crucial for us to solve the problem. So we definitely did not waste any time here reading it, like uh, getting to know for necessary information. No, 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 that never happened. 
So he had decided to make cakes to celebrate at Codro Beginner Contest 200, as we all should. So cake made, <clears throat> a, cake, a cake made by Takahashi has three parameters, beauty, taste, and popularity, each of which is represented by an integer between one and n inclusive. Okay. So he has made a cake of beauty i taste j and popularity k for every triple i j k f bro m cube. Whoa, that's insane. Like he can make that many cakes that we don't and we can't ever eat. Like because n is up to 10 to the sixth, he made n cubed cakes. He renders them in a row send an order of sum, then uh, so sum, then beauty, then taste. Uh, I have to write it down because I will forget about it. Uh, sum. Like uh, several seconds. Okay, we want to find the case cake from the left. Nothing strange here. I mean, sounds like a reasonable question to ask. You create a lot of some objects and then you ask what is like, what's the deal? Uh, <clears throat> so, one thing I can tell you for sure is that there are at least two solutions. One uses, I believe, priority queue. Uh, and then the second one uses, uh, I don't know, mass. <laughs> Let's put it this way. So, but I assume that priority queue should be good. No. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. <clears throat> I am stupid. I thought for some reason that k is small, but k can be large. So actually, this is like completely reasonable. Uh, okay. And we have to use some mass. Let me think. I can definitely count how many cakes there are with every given value of some of these three parameters, because it's like triangular numbers, I know, one, three, six, ten, etc. Uh, so that's clearly computable. Mm, and if I can compute this, and I can I can actually learn our sort, but I can also binary search for the value of sum and then for beauty and then for taste, or we can do everything at once. Am I right? Yeah, I think I am. The question becomes just, uh, no, everything should be fine with longs. All right. Uh, the idea is to use mass to find, to quickly find uh, how good is our guess, I believe. Or even, no, not guess, we will, yeah, 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 no binary search is required, we will just as we compute these values, we'll compute prefix sums. So you see, like, uh, if you imagine everything like a cube, I need to draw this because otherwise no one will understand what I'm talking about. And like, that's a cube of all possible cakes. Obviously, that Takahashi uh, does not arrange them as a cube, but we can. Like in our head. Uh, so then 
here like values one 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 here i don't know one one n one uh, n one potentially n one one because nothing le is left i will have n n one n n n uh it this looks like uh n one n and then this one is one and n Okay, so then kx with the same sum, they will be located on something like triangle here. Uh, or on something like a, a very uncomfortable for computations hexagon, like I don't know where, but it's clearly possible. Is it actually a hexagon? One, two, three, four, five, or is it the heck? Oh, that actually made our lives a bit uh, more complicated. Definitely not by much, but uh, we'll need to figure out more formulas. For these problems than I originally was willing to. Okay, okay. Yes, it should be a hexagon. Okay, we can start with something simple. Um, the sum can be anything up to 3n, I believe, although 3n is not for like uh, 3n minus 3, something like that. Does it really matter? So, First n values we can fill out with triangular numbers, which are one, three, six, etc. So that means um, at i gets i times i believe i plus one over two. And we should make uh, something here long. That should be enough because this will be computed first, then this, then this. Uh, if i is equal, no, actually, uh, stupid. If i is equal to zero, we should get one. Well, like imagine that this cube starts at zero, zero, zero and goes to n minus one, n minus one, n minus one. Uh, so then we should get one, which I believe means that we want to compute something like that. Because then when i equals to one, we will get three times two over two, which is three. And yeah, here we go, triangular numbers. Uh, we also should say that the same works for Three n minus uh, I, I don't know. No, 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 no. Uh, this formula was correct. What we wanted to do is here. So if i is zero, no, actually we want this, I believe now. Yes, I want to write it like this. So just to make it visually clearer, there is that very, um, or not nice part in the middle, right? 
so the parts we are currently filling in are like this prism here, I don't know, and then this prism over here. And we have to somehow fill in what's in between. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure how we are going to do that. We already computed how many are on every such uh, object. I'm going to show it so that it is the same in the same order. Okay, so we cut it like such. It's for every layer. It is below that, below that. Above this one or above this one, we calculate uh, what is uh, the number of cakes on such lines. And because of that, we will be able to find the sum that we are interested in. Now, for example, here we will call something like that. will fill in the values that it should fill in. Uh, then we will, I don't know, we'll find what's the first index that is greater than k, uh, subtract, and then do something else. Oof. But here in between, the, there is some mass expression. I just uh, don't want to figure it out. Uh, OK. Okay, say n is equal to four. Uh, which values can we have? We have one. And what we are looking for now is sum of seven, I believe. So we have one, two, four, two, one, four. Then there is uh, one, three, three, two, two, three, uh, three, one, three. Oh, that's complicated. So one, four, Two, two, three, two, three, two, two, four, one, two, apparently. And then we have some more, no? Here we have two, four, one, and we have three, three, one, uh, four, two, one, and that's it. Oof. Wait, is it the same? Oh, the triangle keeps growing. We just subtract uh, these smaller triangles. Yeah, we have like this triangle and then we subtract these triangles. Yeah, okay, so that was not uh, as bad as I expected it to be. Oof. I just want 
um, quick uh, debug. One, three, three, one, and then zero, zero, it's expected. We actually should have it like at minus two. Minus three or minus two, minus three. Minus two. All right, then. One, three, three, one is correct, but uh, that is not. And this doesn't show anything because actually we should have an at least four to see anything. Seventeen. I believe that there are much more than seventeen actually. One, three, six, ten is triangular numbers, but the next next triangular number is fifteen. But we subtracted three small triangles of size one, so that's this seems working. Uh, but it uh, may be very proud, uh, may very well overflow. No, what am I thinking about? I said most, like the, the total number of like ever seen, all cakes does not overflow. So number of cakes in one layer cannot overflow either. Uh, actually, we will need that debug very soon because I want to see. What are the prefix sums of that array? 1, 4, 10, 20, 32, four. yeah, looks reasonable. Actually, what am I doing? Uh, a is zero indexed or one indexed? One indexed, okay. Uh, I'm super lazy, so I will just make use of library functions so that you don't have to. Uh, so now we will uh, find what is lower or upper, lower. Lower, I'm happy with lower. Uh, okay, 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 that's pretty uncomfortable, but whatever. So from here, and then. That's again some debug. I mean, it's similar to debug as you go and not when you get wrong answer. Uh, so 17 actually happens when sum is equal to two. Okay, that makes sense. Actually, no, it doesn't. <clears throat> Oh, because it's not 17, it's five. And five definitely happens on second. Okay. And this on third, yeah, that makes more sense. Uh, so this is actually sum is it V what? All right. If you don't like that expression, you can uh, very well substitute it with this. Now in among that sum, we should actually, I don't know, find ijk, right? So what if I say something like uh, v? Oh, that's why I did not want to get rid of that iterator, okay. Mm 
Is this this or previous of that? Okay, so the idea here is that so we will exclude whatever happened before from our consideration uh, with the idea that now we actually want to find what is beauty and taste. So in that particular layer, which may be not very nice shape, but we'll have to live with it. <clears throat> uh, we have to find what is the beauty value and taste. And I subtracted this, so that's like whatever happened before. So now we are left with sort of two-dimensional version of the problem. Well, now we can have like, like a triangle. That's Masonic. Uh, tri triangle? Uh, Illuminati triangle. Yeah, that's how you call it, I believe. So anyways, uh, it's either a triangle or that strange hexagonal shape, but we will uh, take care of both of them in the similar fashion. So now, there cannot be many values to beauty. It can only take like one of n values, right? And, uh, we just have to be careful to subtract when we have to, all right? Like the idea is the following. So we look over all possible values on beauty. And we select, well, yeah, it's now what does it get? Like we have to, we have target sum, all right? So target sum equals i plus j plus k. So now j plus k equal target sum minus i, right? Uh, I want to count the number of solutions to that equation with j and k smaller or smaller than n and at least uh, zero. How can we do it? We can find what is minimum j and maximum j that works. And therefore, this will be the difference plus one. What is the minimum j that can work? Like if k is n, right? Well, minimum j is at least zero. We know it for, it's like a given fact. And um, if k is uh, n, then we can pass it over here and it will go on that side. Although k is at most n minus one, right? Uh, and actually this should be here, I believe. And maximum j is at most n minus one and target sum minus i, it cannot be uh, bigger because k is at least zero. We can do the same thing again. This idea like we put values back in. Uh, what do we do next? Uh, the traitor is already here. This time we again search for k because k is updated accordingly. We did this, this, and then actually, uh, actually, what remains is we don't have need to have another loop. We can say like, well, we know what is the target beauty. Uh, 
right? So we can go here. So like this is minimum j. And now I want case element. So I say like uh, targets, I don't know, uh, taste, I believe was that. It's minimum j plus k, then auto target uh, clarity is target sum minus target beauty minus target uh, taste. Oh, that, that makes sense. I forgot that I have such template templates. Okay, uh, like uh, I can bet ten dollars on that it won't work immediately because we are doing too many strange operations for it to work straight away. Well, first thing we missed is we did not add one. But apparently, I also have some more issues. Wait, how did that happen? Okay. Like our solution is logically logically consists of three parts. Here we find beauty. Here we find sum. Here we find taste. Oh, we are spending a lot of time here. That's not nice. So one of them is wrong. Which one? Is the question. <clears throat> Let's start with this. Target sum equals two, which is correct if you consider that we subtracted one from each value. Then target beauty is one. Target beauty is, oh, okay. This value is like we actually added one to it as we should have. You found beauty correctly, but then somehow this did not work. I don't understand. No, 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 wait. If we found target beauty correctly, so for some reason that work. Got very weird, and that uh, is also terribly bad. I really want to know what is the value of k at that moment, and also what is the value of minimum j at that moment. Oh, of course, because if iterator is uh, beauty begin, then we like, uh, what are you doing? We're subtracting uh, just 
in the correct browser. Otherwise, we don't have to subtract them, and that's the point. Uh, one three one. Well, that's wrong. Why? Because this was one based, and that was not one. That was the old based. Yeah. Okay, one two two is correct. Ignore the debug card. Uh, that's clearly incorrect. Uh, why that happened? We actually got target beauty like too high. One thousand and one. We can never have one thousand and one. Wait, but. Uh, But no. Okay, yeah, no, okay. Uh, how bad is it? Oh, I, I actually don't know the answer for this test case. Apparently, target beauty is not good. I saw that K is never greater than like every value in beauty. Looks like it can be because here K is very large, right? Even at that moment. No, I believe that here K just overfill. No, that's reason. That is actually a reasonable value, or it is not. Now, target sum is this. Okay, I believe you. Hmm. And everything gets out of hand. Okay. Not great, but. We can somehow do it. So here we indeed got like the largest value that we should have of target sum, right? It was like everything should be max. Then we create a beauty of length n for every possible value of beauty if and how many there are. But actually, when target sum is that large. Even if i is equal to like n minus one, but target sum is three n minus one. So this will be n minus one and this will be n minus one. So only at n minus one, we should get at least something out of here, okay. Okay, so at that moment, wait, that's the wrong test. Uh, that moment, k is equal to one, as it should be. Here, however, oh, because we, okay, okay. Uh, 
No, like this, I just subtract one value from other and don't check. Yeah, that's much better. Here, three, one, four, the correct answer, and one, two, two is also the correct answer. We just have to remove unnecessary debug and not remove necessary debug, necessary output. There is no necessary debug, of course. Random test also gives like a, at least a, a reasonable answer. Uh, everything that is int can be int. We add long glance go wherever we should, I believe we are good to go. Man, that took a lot to implement. Excuse me. Uh, why? Because target sum is wrong. Also here. That's pretty annoying. Well, at least compile error is not like plus uh, whatever, 10 minutes, five minutes, I don't remember. I hope it compiles at least now. No, still it doesn't work like that. And because now it's long long and this is e long int. I have to do it actually. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, so stupid. Oh no, I know. That's so ugly. Like why you can't just take the longer type? Of course I did not want the link you to cut the rest out. Well, okay, I just should compile with words. With GCC. Good, except it's actually 39 milliseconds. I expected it to be longer, and judging by that's so like do a lot of linear. Well, it's all linear, but it's a lot of work still. We only have 30 minutes, like I. No, 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 no. no. Look at this, like we spent 30, 40 minutes on problem E. Okay, problem F, min flip summation. We have a string S consisting of zeros, ones, and question marks. Let T be the concatenation of K copies of S. Okay, sounds already bad. By replacing each query uh, question mark in T with zero or one, we can obtain uh, two to the power of q, q, k, q strings where q is the number of question marks in S. Solve the problem below for each of these strings and find the sum of all answers. Model 10, okay. Let t prime be the string obtained by replacing question marks in t. We will repeatedly do the operation below to make all the characters in t the same. At least how many operations are needed for this? I choose two integers such that and invert the else through R's characters of P. Okay. Uh, to make all the same, that's simple. So let's 
And the original problem just looks hard. Oof. Oh, the number of inversions for a given string is uh, what? More or less number of consecutive groups. Like you group characters into consecutive groups of equal characters and you count number of groups and you something like divide by two. Uh, round down, I don't know, or round up actually. Uh, because you can expand from middle and then you will like, obviously groups don't matter, you can just invert group entirely. Uh, so you can replace uh, the string with compressed version and then it's clear how many operations you need because there are only two uh, sub, like strings of given lengths. It's like, Zero one zero one zero one and one zero one zero one zero. Uh, but then to solve the original problem, I don't know. You need to be smart and have more time, I believe. How bad we did? Let's see. Are we are at least in like I don't know top thousand? Oh, actually not that bad, but of course we need to solve F to get anywhere near good. Uh, yeah, people are crazy. Was I actually like only Only, I don't know, 44 people solved this. So it's going to be like a red on Kentco. Okay, well, let's, I don't know. I was thinking a bit too hard on previous problems, so I, I need some time to get my brain working again. And then we'll sync. So we have a lot of problems uh, with this uh, question. First, there are k copies of s. Second, there are too many strings, and third, we don't know how to count groups uh, quickly. Yeah. No, okay. Like, what is the number of groups? So the number of groups is uh, more or less equal to the number of zero ones, like consecutive zero and one characters in the string. Uh, because if you count zero ones and one zeros, uh, then you will get one less than the number of uh, groups. Okay, so we essentially asked how many times this happens. So yes, I think we're only interested in how many times this happens. Because if the string is like this, then inverting this solves and we have one such group. If the string is like this, then we have two such groups and clearly like, I don't know, inverting this and this solves. Uh, yeah, like we, are, we can always solve if we have that many, but what if we have one zero, one zero? We only have one such group, but we cannot solve. Well, well that's disappointing. Uh,
if the first character of t is not this, yeah, okay, like the idea is the following. So we uh, say like, the number of operations to solve that subproblem, number of operations to solve this is depends on the number of occurrences of substrings 0, 1 and 1, 0. Right? So we want to count them. How to count them? Well, like there are some naturally occurring strings, right? And then there are some strings like this, this, and this that can become this after we change uh, question marks. We think, okay, in how many cases this uh, will become zero one? Well, it turns out it's two to the power of kq minus one because it only like whether we get or we don't get this only depends on this local group. We can use linearity of expectation to prove uh, whatever we want to prove from local facts about general facts. Uh, so same for this one. Then uh, here we need both characters to get whatever we want them to go. Uh, so, okay. Uh, there are still some issues. Or there are no issues. No, okay, because there are only like these powers of two, we can pre-compute each of them in, I don't know, uh, log of cac u, which is small enough. Uh, and then we can't, but the, the problem is that uh, we sometimes have one such group that we cannot fix in one swap, so we have to uh, it looks like we have to count these groups as well. And how do we know when we round down and when we don't? One thing I can tell you is that if our string starts with zero, then we want to count zero once. If it starts with one, then we want to count once zeros. Oh, that actually leads to like clear approach, okay. Like we just, if the first character of S is uh, known, then we just count what we wanted to count. If it's not known, then we will count for both cases separately. Right, makes sense. And then, uh, yeah, then that's it. Well, it's gonna take us 18 minutes. We can definitely upload of that. Uh, Sure, if you can do it like that. Oh, okay, let me just be reasonable. Oof. Oh, wait. Wait. Oh, 
is Okay, this computes a binary exponentiation, very quick. Uh, we have three cases, if S0 is equal to zero, then we want to count zero once. zeros should have solved e like uh, f like honestly so much nicer than And it will just take too long to realize all our time. And then uh, Oof. Some not good. Okay. Uh, no, there is actual easier. Like this should be counted every time we see it. So that's okay. Okay. Uh, zero is power. Actually, I can erase everything. So if si is equal to zero and si plus one, I'm scared because there are case such positions. Zero equals Z S I But the chair choose one right, so D one times K. We also have to check like uh, on the boundary when we concatenate a zero comes after s one minus one. Oh my goodness. Uh,
We will never finish it if we write like this. The idea is that we actually should just define cost function or like not cost, but actually how much does it help us? Uh, we have a given combination. That is, we are counting zero ones. So actually, C zero one. Let's put it this way. C uh, zero one of a sign as one. Uh, one is zero in this order. Then we have C one zero. Change this, 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 and this. Oh, okay. This, which is this, looks like it. Oh, we have else if, so we don't have to worry about that. So. Okay, uh, of C10. Here we have to count both. So, how to do it? Like, we have to imagine what happened if we changed on the very first character, uh, then everything should be fine, apart from the fact that. Uh, let me think. Here we changed it to zero. I don't really understand, but it sounds like we should Calculate just both and then divide by two. No, it's like we fix one first character. So, like, all powers of two should get decremented by one. Oh, okay. Power, power. Uh, yeah, I think it will be. Oh, not void, but 64 and here we don't have anything, okay. And zero ones, same thing, but here it has this. Oh man, if we have to debug it, then we are 
done. Like, there's no actions. We will fix it in time if we are around like anything going. Imagine if I will make this case when there are no question marks. Well, at least we have like one nice large perfect test. Oh, excuse me. What are you thinking about? Okay, this one. So I've got an infinite loop, but why? First we read string, then k, then we do literally nothing that should not take much time. Oh, unless it's zero, okay. Uh, This is correct, actually. Okay. Okay. That looks correct. I don't know. Okay. We may be still very wrong, but maybe. Just like that. Okay. No, that was legit hard. I mean, come on. You had to like be very careful with what you compute. And you, in our particular case, we also had like no time to be careful, but somehow we succeeded because I decided to use best programming practices and avoid code, code duplication. I don't know how to put it the other way, but that's literally what happened. Uh, oof. Rough, tough, very tough contest. Uh, I don't know, we must be in like top 100, but I don't know where exactly. I guess that's what you have to do to be in first down. Okay, we are like. Yeah. 50s. But some people saw it in like 14. Well, actually, the only like uh, I believe that what, what was clearly the worst part. We spent some time here explaining. If I were not explaining, I would probably solve everything in like 20 minutes. Well, if your first four questions in 20 minutes is pretty much possible. Uh, then here I don't think that I could have saved uh, more time. So probably it would have been a bit not that nervous, but still, man, it's like 10 minutes is the maximum that I can imagine ourselves saving here. And making like 85 minutes, it's not much of a difference, right? Yeah, it puts like, uh, I don't know, in top 14, but that's not... No different at all. Oh, Naomi had a lot of wrong submissions, and we did not have like any wrong submissions. That's magical. 
I don't know how we did it. Uh, oh, we were also like three minutes late, I remember. So probably, I don't know, like 15 minutes is the maximum I can imagine ourselves. Uh, so here, let me make, yeah. Okay. Good. So the idea was that so like, uh, the number of, yeah, like once you recognize the number of groups is equal to the number of zero ones uh, or one zeros, then you just uh, have to understand that this is clearly repetitive. That's why you can just multiply everything and you'll be fine. Uh, so just like that, thanks everyone for watching. Excuse me, camera. Uh, so I hope that was useful. We like we performed not bad, I believe. Let's. Uh, it will be actually interesting to see how they measure our performance. I believe it's pretty much uh, twenty four hundred will be. If you maybe check, uh, yeah, like last time we were like in top two hundred and it was twenty four hundred, and this time we are like fiftieth, uh, which is uh, our best performance all time. So it clearly has to be like 2400. And I believe that's actually why we are in D1 at the moment. But this thing is not rated for me. Otherwise, it would be a very easy way for higher rated people to get rated. But no, you have to. Uh, we have to compete in Ad Color Regular contest, which will happen tomorrow, I believe. Um, I have some. A random plans to write a lead code contest, which is 5 a.m. in the morning tomorrow. So I will either have to go to sleep very early, and then maybe I will be able to participate in both lead code and uh, add code regular, or I will uh, miss lead code and then only participate in add code regular contest. Uh, so just like that, uh, see you next time around. Bye-bye.